Hi everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine. We're an all natural plant-based fitness nutrition company. So, you know, I hear from people from time to time say, I can't eat fruit, it'll make me fat because of the high sugar content. Ah. Okay, well, let's jump into what the actual research says about fruit. But first, let me get the intros out of the way. Thank you for joining us here on Clean Machine Online, as well as Clean at Clean Machine Fit and boom, Amazon Live. So you can catch us live on Amazon at Clean Machine Fit, or you can catch us later on Clean Machine Online at YouTube. So all of our all of these will be recorded and posted on our YouTube channel so you can watch them anytime in case you don't have time right now. <laughs> okay, so before we get started, the disclaimer, uh, we don't want to get in trouble and I don't want to make any claims that uh, aren't uh, legitimate. So this video is for informational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Uh, supplementation does not deal with disease states. That is not our turf. We leave that up to the practitioners, the doctors, the physicians, and all the people uh, in the professional healthcare environment that can help you make those decisions that are right for you. But I do love talking about the research because the research can empower us, can help us make the best decisions. And we can even bring these, uh, bring this information to our practitioners to make the best healthcare decisions for us. But we can also make good decisions on what we eat. Now that's totally up to us. So what we eat, does fruit make you fat? <laughs> I laugh and I don't mean it in any uh, condescending way. I laugh because the overwhelming body of evidence, and we're gonna go some over some of those research, excuse me, studies uh, on this particular one, but uh, fruit uh, acts very differently. So this is one of the things that I've always hated about macros. If those of you who are out there doing bodybuilding and counting or looking at your macros, macros will tell you exactly the amount of carbohydrates, fats, sugars, if you're tracking that, but the three main carb uh, macros are uh, protein, fats, and carbs. What they don't tell you is that the protein, that carbs, and that fat can all behave very differently in your body based on your digestive tract, your microbiome, your absorption levels, your body's ability to process them, whether those carbs, fats, and proteins are in a whole food state, because when they're in a whole food state, they become packaged with lots of other different phytochemicals. If you're taking plants, for an example, not so in, in animal products. But when you're consuming plant products, they're surrounded by fiber and pectin and prebiotics and polyphenols and all these wonderful antioxidants that affect our microbiome. That's how much of that is absorbed. Uh, it affects internally in our body, in our bloodstream, how that carbohydrate, how that sugar is processed in the body, how it's metabolized, what it converts to, what waste materials it produces, how much and how quickly it does that. Um, sorry about that. I should turn the phone off before. don't tell you what they do once they get past your mouth. And that is where metabolism comes in. These different vitamins and minerals, whether they have high chromium, high zinc, these can affect blood sugar, glucose, and blood glucose levels. Um, if they're high in uh, phytochemicals, flavonoids, polyphenols, antioxidants, um, lots of different chemicals in these that come packaged in whole foods that make them process differently. So sugar gram for sugar gram does not equal the same thing in the body. Let's take, uh, let's take a whole fruit, for example, like blueberries. Blueberries are what they call low glycemic. So they don't raise the glycemic or sugar index 
in your body and they don't stimulate insulin release because if you're just doing a little bit that's a little bit of insulin because that's all the insulin that's needed to help shuttle those things into the uh, 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 into the into the cells right so what's really important is how it affects that bloodstream how it affects those insulin levels so let's dive right into this study so this is a brand new study just came out uh, recently, and it showed that those consuming two or more fruits, I actually averaged it out closer to three fruits based on the gram level, um, uh, about two to three servings of fruits per day had a 36% lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Now, this is pretty amazing because a lot of people fear away from fruits. <laughs> fearing that they'll get diabetes, right? Or that they'll have blood sugar issues when actually these fruits have been shown to lower the risk of diabetes. So just the opposite, which is pretty amazing. Um, so let's dive into the study and I'll read the quotes exactly verbatim, right as from the quote as they are quoted. So the study is called Associations Between Fruit Intake and the Risk of Diabetes in the Ostiap cohort. Okay, so this is the exact quote. Participants with moderate total fruit intakes, that's the third quartile, they put it into four quartiles of how much fruit, basically one or less servings, two to three, three or four, and then and then more servings of fruit of that. And they found those in quartile three had 36% lower odds of having diabetes after a five-year follow-up. So they put them, they tracked their diet for five years and looked at them, and those who ate more fruits basically had lower risk for diabetes. Now, here's the exact quote, another quote from it, which was very fascinating to me because I think this is the biggest concern which people have about this, all the sugar in fruit, right? Well, if you put high sugar into the bloodstream, insulin levels shoot up. If you use white sugar, isolated sugar, that's an isolated carbohydrate, it goes quickly right into the bloodstream and then floods the bloodstream with sugar. So insulin response is real big too as well. Well, what they saw was when you consume whole fruits, not fruit juices, let's be clear about that. They made that very clear in this study. Fruit juices did not have these beneficial effects because what you have in the fruit juice is basically the sugar and the water and some of the other nutrients too as well, but you've stripped out most of the fiber, most of the prebiotics, most of the pectin, most of these things that actually slow and regulate blood sugar uptake. So what they looked at is that they compared two participant, participants in the lowest total fruit intake quartile. So that's the, the people who ate the least amount of fruits. Now they compared them to the highest intake quartile and the ones with the highest amount of fruits actually had 5% lower insulin, lower insulin, higher fruits, lower insulin. <laughs> so this is, this is why I want people to get past this fear of fruits got a lot of sugar in it. So it's going to make me fat. No, that's not how it works. <laughs> um, so I'll, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put that up there so you guys can see both the quotes and the study itself. And you can grab the link. And I'll put it up on the screen real quick so you can see the title of the study. And there it is in the comments for those of you watching on uh, on on our Facebook channels or on the YouTube later, you can see it there. Um, for those of you who are watching on Amazon.live, I'll always read it out loud. Um, so what are some of the reasons why fruit doesn't have the same impact? Um, so a good question from um, Marcella. Thank you, Marcella, for your question. What about smoothies? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show actually <laughs> a study using smoothies. So this one is uh, a study called The Effect of New Zealand Blueberry Consumption on Recovery from Eccentric Exercise-Induced Muscle Damage. So there's two ways to work out. Eccentric, which means that that's 
pulling towards the muscle or clenching the muscle, and there's eccentric, which is the elongation of the muscle. Okay, so that's what eccentric exercise is, basically lifting weights. <laughs> so in this study, they used blueberries, and they used blueberry smoothies. And I'll read it to you straight from the study. Conclusions. The conclusions part of the study is where they actually show the results of the study. So it says conclusions. This study demonstrates that the ingestion of a blueberry smoothie, there's the answer to your question, Marcella. Marcella I hope I'm saying it right. Um, the, this study demonstrates the ingestion of a blueberry smoothie prior to and after the exercise accelerates recovery of muscle peak isometric strength. So this helped the body recover and get to full strength faster. Well, this is awesome because if you're working out on a regular basis, this can help you actually not get into a place where you're accelerating the damage process, which is called overtraining. You need that full recovery so that you not only gain the strength so you can lift the weights again, but also not do damage on top of damage. You want that full recovery so that when you exercise again, you're not re-damaging or overtraining or causing too much cellular damage that the body can't compare to, keep up with. So this effect, although independent of the beverage's inherent antioxidant capacity, appears to involve an upregulation of adaptive processes. Now, this is really important because a lot of people think, oh, that's just because it's high in antioxidants and you can get antioxidants from other things. Well, they showed in this study, they said in this study, that's actually not the case. It wasn't because of its antioxidant status, which is great. You want antioxidant status because what are we doing? We are oxidizing our body when we breathe heavy, when we're exercising, whether it's endurance exercise or rather strength training, you're breathing in a lot, right? You're taking in more oxygen. Why? Because oxygen oxidizes fats. Fat oxidation breaks it apart so that it releases that energy and we can use it. So we need that oxygen in order to free up the energy that's stored in fat. Well, it's exactly what you want. But once you have all that oxygen used, you have oxygen-free radicals. That's where antioxidants come along and can quench those uh, oxygen-free radicals that you've just created <laughs> in trying to burn fat which is great because it releases the energy which your muscles need for that exercise and for recovery. So that's all the great processes. You just need those antioxidants to come in there and bind to those oxygen-free radicals that you've just created from moving at so it doesn't damage your cells. And that's why having a, a blueberry smoothie prior to even after workout can be very beneficial for your recovery, for your strength gains, and to prevent damage on damage so that you're not actually making those muscle gains that you're working hard for. And you don't have to wait as long a period in order to get that full recovery. These beautiful fruits, especially blueberries, strawberries with fisetin in it, look up fisetin, it's amazing flavonoid. They showed in a, in a preliminary study, albeit still had to be proven in human beings, but the preliminary study was amazing. Um, when they fed animals, and look, I do not believe in animal studies, but they're out there, so I'm going to talk about them. Um, but uh, the animal study showed that consuming fisetin, which the highest source of fisetin we know of right now is uh, strawberries. So great, add some blueberries, add some strawberries, and some mango, and I'll tell you why in a second. But the fisetin in there, when they fed um, mice and rats, a high fat diet, but they gave them the fisetin, strong amounts of fisetin from strawberries, what happened? The ones in the placebo group gained 75% more body fat than those consuming the fisetin, which is found in strawberries. That's pretty cool. So these flavanols, these polyphenols, these antioxidants can actually work to inhibit the accretion or the gathering and holding on to a fat. So they prevent the uptake of fat so that the body can actually utilize these calories and not store them as fat. So you're seeing some of these amazing effects, but here's another one too, apples. Apples are rich in this incredible polyphenol called floridzin or florizin or floritin. It has a lot of different similar chemical names. 
uh, they're slightly different chemicals and chemical structure, but work in a very class of, uh, of polyphenols. What's amazing about them is not only, uh, okay, so we're apples, right? Fluoridzin is found in the skin of the apples. So this is another reason why you want to eat the whole apple. Don't peel the apple and don't juice the apple because then you're not getting hardly any of that fluoridzin or fluoridzin. So what you want to do is eat that whole apple with the skin. That's where most of that fluoridzin is at. So what does that fluoridzin do? It not only uh, slows the amount of sugar going into the, to the digestive tract, into the bloodstream from the digestive tract, not only does that, but it actually helps the body in preventing the storage of it and accelerating the utilization of those sugars. So it assists the body so your body doesn't have to increase the insulin. And that may be why we're seeing lower insulin with higher fruit intakes, because the, these polyphenols and these, these different phytonutrients that are found in the whole fruits themselves are actually assisting the body so it doesn't need as much uh, insulin to shuttle those sugars to the right places, to utilize those sugars and carbohydrates for energy. So this is amazing. Let's, let's keep going though, because there's so many good fruits out there. Cherries is another great one. In this study, the efficacy of tart cherry juice blend in preventing syst uh, symptoms of muscle damage. So once again, we're showing the consumption of tart cherries, but this is pretty, pretty amazing. This is what the results found. Most notably, strength loss. That's the loss of strength after your workouts. Strength loss averaged over four days after eccentric exercise. Remember, that's weight training, using weights. After eccentric exercises was 22%. So those in the placebo group eating no fruits, no, no dark cherries, tart cherries, had 22% muscle loss over four days. Only 4% muscle loss after four days when you consumed tart cherries. Once again, the tart cherries are helping the body in its recovery process, preventing some damage through the antioxidants and gaining more of that, maintaining more of that strength because you're not doing as much damage to the tissues. This is amazing. These Polyphenol rich, uh, different fruits are incredible in their effects. So not only are they helping with the preventing of fat storage and fat accumulation, but they're actually helping the body recover, helping you gain more back to strength. Basically, these are all the things you're looking for. So why not put these wonderful plants into a smoothie? I'll go ahead and post up the, uh, the two studies on the blueberries in a smoothie. Remember, that was blueberry smoothies <laughs> uh, actually used in the study. I'm going to go ahead and post those up here so people can see them. And again, if you are uh, watching on Amazon Live, don't worry about it. Uh, you can you can catch these on our website, on our um, Facebook pages, but uh, you can catch the links there. Uh, we're not uh, able to post links up on um, uh, Amazon.com or Amazon Lives, um, but I'll always read those studies out to you out loud so you can look them up and uh, look at it later and look up those studies so you can look at them yourself. And go ahead and get those posted in here, and so everybody can take a look at them. Two very nice studies using blueberries and cherries. And of course, I talked a little bit about the fisetin too um, from strawberries, but one of my favorites is mangoes. So mangoes contain a really cool polyphenol called mangiferin. Mangiferin is uh, amazing. And it's got all, there's a whole bunch of stuff, studies out there. It's M-A-N-G-I-F-E. E-R-I-N, mangiferin, look it up. Human studies, mangiferin, and you're gonna see some amazing things out there. This study is a really nice one too. Um, mangiferin, and this is the study title for the use on, on Amazon Live. Mangiferin supplementation improves serum lipid profiles in overweight patients with hyperlipidemia. Hyper meaning a lot, 
lipid meaning fat, anemia meaning uh, accumulation of it, right? So hyperlipidemia is mm, too much fat in the bloodstream, basically. A double-blind, randomized, controlled study. So an RCT, this is really important because what you want to look in humans is, is randomized, uh, placebo-controlled um, studies so that you are making sure that the studies have at least a much higher uh, accuracy rate. So this is what they found. Mandifarin supplementation could improve serum lipid profiles, that's your, your whole lipid profiles, uh, by reducing serum triglycerides and free fatty acids in overweight patients with hyperlipidemia, partly due to the promotion of, a, of free fatty acid oxidation. Well, this is exactly what we want. These free fatty acids and triglycerides are released from our fat stores, basically, into the bloodstream when we exercise, because our body is saying, okay, release the hounds, bring us some energy. And fat is a really good source of energy. So our body will tend to want to go to blood sugar first, burn off that blood sugar, glycogen, burn off the glycogen, and then some other um, sources of energy too. Then it will go to fat. But the free fatty acids, once they get into the bloodstream, you want to make sure they're getting broken down or oxidized. Remember, that's what fat burning is, is fat oxidation. What is wood burning is wood oxidation. So when you say you're burning wood, you're actually saying you're oxidizing the wood. That oxygen <laughs> this turns to flames, right? Well, that's why we call it fat burning, because it's fat oxidation just like uh, metal oxidizing is called rust. Wood oxidizing is called fire. <laughs> fat oxidizing is called fat burning. <laughs> um, so these are three different ways of oxidation that happen that break down things. Obviously burning wood is a very radical and very rapid oxidation of the wood, whereas rust is a very slow oxidation of the metal. And then fat burning is actually very quick and rapid too inside the human body when it's done in a healthy environment. So this is really cool that we're showing that mangiferin from mangoes, remember mangoes, strawberries, blueberries, these are all low glycemic fruits. Why? Why are they low glycemic? Well, this is interesting. So not only are these polyphenols and flavonoids and all these good phytonutrients actually assisting in the weight loss process, there's a whole bunch of more mechanisms at work from eating fruits that you don't get from other sources. Let's talk about some of those. Um, pectin. So pectin is really cool. Pectin, really high in blueberries. That's why they're one of the best sources of, of pectin out there. But pectin is found in a lot of different fruits and even some greens. Um, there are pecto oligosaccharides in dark greens like clean green protein. Ashley, yes. Clean green protein contains lentin, and lentin contains these, these pectin-type prebiotic fibers. And this is pretty cool because you usually see these mostly in fruits, but they're also in some dark greens like lentine. So let's talk about the uh, beneficial effects of pectin. What does pectin do? It creates kind of a gelatinous material inside our gut as it starts to break down, right? It's a fiber that pulls in water and swells and stuff like this. Well, this can actually slow the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream in a way as it breaks down slowly in there, slowly releasing the sugars little by little over, over a period of time, exactly the way you want it. Remember, when you isolate those sugars, you've taken out the fibers, the prebiotics, the pectin, all these things could actually help slow and slow release those are now getting sugar in it's boom, fast release. All that sugar dumped into the bloodstream all at once, spiking of insulin, causing pro-inflammatory situation, White sugar is totally pro-inflammatory, where almost all of your fruits are anti-inflammatory. They reduce the inflammation. And this inflammatory state is one of the precursor states of almost all of the major diabetes, um, obesity, um, uh, arthritis, um, arteriosclerosis. I mean, these are all inflammatory situations, and fruits are highly anti-inflammatory, especially berries. That's why I'm talking about them right now. Strawberries, fisetin, blueberries, the anthocyanins uh, in them. Um, and now mangoes with the mangiferin. 
I was so excited about Magifarian and its benefits. Um, we actually put Magifarian in our new pre-workout. It's called Zynamite. So that is the patented clinical name. So Magifarian not only has amazing benefits for uh, weight control, glucose control, but it also has benefits for the brain. Incredible benefits matter. It increases oxygen uptake by up to 11%. This is really cool because our brain is an oxygen hoe. <laughs> It, it, is, it has about three to 5% of our body's mass and uses 20% of our body's tire oxygen. So it's, it, it just really soaks up a ton of oxygen. So our brain needs oxygen. And if we can increase the oxygen efficiency through by consuming different plant polyphenols and antioxidants and phytonutrients, that could help us brain function more. I can't wait till you guys try, if you haven't already, uh, our intense clean pre-workout because it's got actually two different sources. So Magifarian is that uh, really cool polyphenol that's doing some nice things with mango, but in the mango leaf, there's even higher amounts of Magifarian. And in the bark, there's even higher amounts of Magifarian. So this is pretty cool that now if you take a mango smoothie, <laughs> add some of this, you're actually getting mango fruit, mango leaf, and mango bark. So you're getting a good dose of mangiferin, and wow, can you feel the effects. It is amazing. Can't wait to you to try it. I love this stuff, which is why I built a whole product around it. Um, so this you can do. This is what I do. So you take blueberries, strawberries, and mango, right? So you got three nice sources of fruit in there. Um, you've got red with uh, strawberries. You've got blue, purple, really, <laughs> with the blueberries. And you've got orange with the mango. So now you've got three different colors with three different anthocyanins. You've got three different specific beneficial effects, amazing amounts of polyphenol, high amounts of vitamin C from strawberries. One of the highest of the fruits in strawberries actually is strawberries is vitamin C. Um, so, and you've got all these amazing fibers, prebiotic fibers, oligosaccharides, polyphenols. Now, most people don't know that, yes, most people know that fiber, uh, some sorts of fibers are uh, prebiotics, which is they feed our good bacteria and our microbiome. But we, we just recently, more recently found out was polyphenols actually get eaten by our uh, good microbes, our gram positive, as they're called, uh, microbes in our healthy gut. So the they're also feeding on oligosaccharides, um, like fructo oligosaccharides. And just like fructo sounds like, these are in fruits mostly. Uh, fructo oligosaccharides, or FOS, is actually feeding our, our gut bacteria. Some of the fibers, like the pectins, feed our good, healthy gut bacteria. The polyphenols feed our healthy, good bacteria. Now, when you eat an animal product, milk, dairy, eggs, beef, chicken, even fish have zero fiber, zero polyphenols, zero anthocyanins, zero antioxidants that are found in fruits and vegetables. None of this is feeding your good, healthy bacteria. So you're getting less poor absorption of your nutrients. So it's not just what you put in your mouth. It's how it's actually digested down below. And if you are feeding your healthy bacteria all of these amazing phytochemicals that are found, especially in fruits, but in fruits and vegetables and grains and nuts and seeds, these are the ones that feed our healthy bacteria, allow us to take that nutrition that's in our food and really utilize it. Remember, getting the body to utilize it in the proper ways slowly absorb it into the bloodstream, process it in the liver and kidneys and our internal organs, shuttle it to the muscles and stuff and prevent the storage of it in body fat unless it's totally necessary. This is exactly what you want. And this comes housed wholly in the fruits and vegetables, packaged with all of those different phytochemicals that your body needs to process it, these proteins, fats, carbs, and fiber 
I think that's the fourth macronutrient there. Uh, but to process all of these macros in the right way for your body to utilize the maximum amount of nutrition and get those different sources of energetic and structural qualities of plant nutrients into the right places at the right time, especially for building muscle. And that's why at 58 years of age, I can be 100% drug-free. I don't take even aspirin. Drug-free completely, disease-free completely. And I can be this at 58 and be a natural bodybuilding champion, natural physique champion. Yes, this is the way you can keep healthy, keep strong, and keep yourself in great shape without the body fat. This is amazing. And these plants have all this packaged in there. Um, so uh, I get a question from Amazon Alive. What can I eat to help my pancreatitis? Pancreatitis is a disease state. So uh, as a supplement owner, we are legally not allowed to comment on disease states. That's something you're going to have to take up with your physician and only a physician can respond to that. Um, so if you get any response from a supplement company, you shouldn't be because that is a disease state and we're not allowed to speak about disease states. Uh, I hope you uh, do uh, look at the benefits and uh, the health benefits of a plant-based diet because it could help you in that situation, but that's a conversation you have between your, you and your practitioner. So what are the other things? So the prebiotics actually change the entire mi microbiome. But not only that. So once you eat them, they change how the sugar, the fibers, right? The pectin all change how the sugar is absorbed in the system. But then they feed your microbiome. So the microbiome then starts making different things like short chain fatty acids like butyrate. Well, butyrate can be absorbed into the system and then be used as an anti-inflammatory helping reduce the inflammation that you do when you work out. So here is the second tier. So you're getting the lower glucose absorption from the fiber and pectin, but then you're also feeding the microbiome, which then produces more cool chemicals like butyrate, short chain fatty acids that actually help reduce the inflammation from your workout. So you recover faster. Second benefit. Now, once it's into the bloodstream, it can actually have even more benefits. Those, those chemicals can help your body shuttle it to the right place and help it utilize it. So things like that. Um, so you've got fiber, you've got polyphenols, you've got oligosaccharides, but you also have resistant starches in, in fruits. It's, here's an interesting thing. If you take a banana and it's partially green, it's actually high in resistant starches. So resistant starches actually feed the microbe, uh, the microbiome, uh, microbiota, excuse me, that live in your microbiome. They feed them. They feed off of these resistant starches, meaning resistant to being digested. So when you eat a banana slightly on the green side, you can actually get more beneficial health benefits to your microbiome and lower the amount of blood sugars. Now, as it starts to yellow, the more yellow it gets, the more those starches are being turned through enzymes into sugars. And then as they start getting brown spots, you actually start increasing the amount of sugars pretty significantly. And if they've got a lot of brown spots on them, actually some of those sugars have already started converting to alcohols. So you can actually smell that. If you've ever smelled a way overripe banana, you smell that alcohol, that's actually bacteria breaking down the sugars and converting them all the way down to alcohols. So <laughs> you can get a little bit of alcoholic buzz um, from that. So if you are looking to maintain uh, a leaner physique, you want to eat the bananas a little bit on the greener side to have more of that resistant starches. These are actually shown to help with the body in um, uh, not storing body fat. It lowers the amount of glucose getting into the same bloodstream and it feeds your good bacteria. Now, if you are looking like post-workout and you're already lean, but you really want to feed the muscles a nice burst of glucose, then a riper banana might be good for you. I do that post-workout. I keep my low glycemic shake prior to the workout. So I keep my blood sugar down. So that encourages the body to utilize fat during my workout. And then post-workout, I 
feed the body because now I've wiped out the, glu uh, the glycogen, I've wiped out the blood sugar, I've wiped out most of the stores of uh, quickly usable um, triglycerides and free fatty acids. So now I really want to feed that so the muscle has the energy, the quick energy it needs to actually do the healing and repairing and rebuilding of the muscle tissue. So it's going to require a lot of energy to do that. And that's why I give it a good source of more quickly available, more higher glycemic, like dates or like uh, bananas post-workout, and then put my berries, which are all mangoes and blueberries, strawberries, raspberries are awesome for your pre-workout smoothie and your dark greens. Remember dark greens with a high fiber content, high polyphenol content. That's a great way to get your, and that's why I chose lentine and clean green protein, because not only is it high in protein, but it's really high in fiber. 35% of your entire day's worth of fiber in one scoop. So if you're doing like one and a half scoops, you're getting a ton of fiber, but it's also 20% of that fiber is prebiotic fiber, the pectin fiber that I was talking to you about, which is really beneficial for the health gut, but also slows that sugar in there. Slow your roll. You want a little bit of blood sugar, enough to keep you going so you don't crash, you don't hit that um, low blood sugar crash that you can get if you work out with a lot of intensity or if you're doing... Um, cardio prior to your workout too as well. But also those polyphenols, when they got started, the polyphenols can break down by our metabolism in our gut through our microbes. They can break down and produce other really cool chemicals. These chemicals have been shown to go into the bloodstream and actually assist with proper utilization of the sugars. So there's so many multiple streams of benefits that are coming from these uh, fruits and, and dark greens that really help the body in assisting and utilizing these sugars. So it's not just how much calories from sugars or carbs that you put in your body. It's how those carbohydrates, how those sugars are used by the body. That's what's more important. So when you're talking about sugars from a donut <laughs> or sugars from a strawberry, huge different effects on the body, even if it's the exact same gram amount. 20 grams of carbs through, through blueberries is going to have hardly any glycemic spike. 20 grams of carbs from white sugar or a cookie or something like that, big spike in insulin, big dump once your body does that and crashes. Hugely different effects. Remember, that white sugar, that processed sugar is pro-inflammatory, causing all this inflammation in the body. And this, these uh, fruits out there with that sugar, actually low glycemic, so it doesn't cause a storage fat, and they are antioxidizing. So they r reduce that inflammation that you can uh, see when you are using processed foods and stuff like this. That's why it was so important for me to come out with a protein to give you that. Because remember, protein spikes insulin too as well. Look that up, Google it, protein spike insulin. And you'll see, see some amazing studies. Most people think it's just sugar that spikes insulin, and that's not true at all. Actually, protein can spike insulin just as bad, if not worse in some cases. So check that out. And that's why I wanted lentein, because it's a whole food. You're getting all of the fiber, all of the polyphenols, and all of the protein that you need for muscle building, but it's more in its whole food state so that you get what you need and at feeding your microbiome and reducing the inflammation to help with recovery so you can get back in the gym, have a great workout at full strength. That's going to help you recover. It's going to help you gain muscle faster. It's going to keep you in the gym more often because you won't be so sore. You won't be destroying and damaging tissues and muscle tissues because you have these amazing benefits of that. So lastly, I want to, I have a friend of mine, um, who, with a, a partner of his, wrote an amazing book. It's called uh, Mastering Diabetes. And you can get it right here on Amazon if you're watching on Amazon. Mastering Diabetes uh, by Dr. Cyrus Kambada, PhD, and Robbie Barbaro, MPH. Great book. Um, and they actually show approaches for improving not only type 2 diabetes, but actually improving type 1 one diabetes by increasing increasing insulin sensitivity with a high fruit diet. You heard that right. Check it out. Go to their website. Check out their Facebook page. 
he's got some amazing information. They, I should say, I'm um, friends with uh, Robbie, uh, haven't met Cyrus yet, but um, great book, great eye-opening information, uh, backed by the research, uh, incredible. And obviously uh, they are plant-based, high fruit, and uh, um, are put together an amazing book for those. Hopefully that's helpful for you, something to discuss with your physician, your practitioner, your doctors out there too. So I've covered a lot of information. I will get to the questions right after this if I missed any of the questions from you guys. Um, this is information I hope you share. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up, give it a like, subscribe, and hope to see you next week when we got more guests and more information about some incredible stuff coming up for Clean Machine. Thanks for joining me.